It is a rare and unusual gathering on this day at the University of Texas in Austin. A day dedicated to the official opening of a new presidential library and a school of public affairs, bearing the name Lyndon B. Johnson. Many of the guests are themselves part of the history contained within the library. hand this day to affirm the great and lasting contribution that the library and its resources will make possible to generations of Americans. The years of President Johnson's public career during the 4th and 5th and 6th and 7th decades of this century have been now given a physical record. Insight for deepening knowledge of that period is the main purpose of the Presidential Library. Such insight, of course, is not gained solely from artifacts of experience. It calls upon both imagination and a sense of human destiny. The idea for this unique library grew from a proposal in 1965 by the University of Texas that President Johnson place his papers on the campus. The concept of a resource collection within the academic community for scholars and researchers appealed to the president, but he wished that a part be available also to the average citizen. Planning was soon underway, and by September 1967, while history was yet being written by the Johnson administration, construction had begun. As President and Mrs. Johnson eagerly watched the library taking shape, so did the public. Just prior to opening day, CBS News presented a special preview. is indebted to you, President Johnson, and to this great university, the University of Texas, to all who've had a hand in assembling and establishing this extraordinary treasury of insights into a critical period of this nation's history. And on behalf of all the people of the United States, I am honored and privileged to accept it for America. The American people have reason to be doubly grateful to you today, first for your long period of service to the nation, and now for this collection that can take the scholars of future generations behind the scenes. One of the first rules of statecraft is that, if, that we can successfully chart the future only if we can understand the past. 
libraries such as this can be among our best keys to that understanding. With its more than 31 million documents, this contains more items by far than any other presidential library yet established. And through its connection with a great university, it promises both to enrich the university and to be enriched by the university. We're all partners in this hopeful undertaking. The people of Texas have built this library. The National Archives will manage this library. The documents that I have preserved since the days I was in college are being given along with the records of many others who served with me in government. These records contain millions and millions of words. But the two that best express my philosophy are man can. In accordance with President Johnson's wish, the library is a public place. Its doors are open, admission free, seven days a week, from nine in the morning to five in the afternoon. More than 2,000 visitors a day have come, have signed the guest book, have leisurely toured the rooms and exhibits. They have become observers of history. They have seen the actual documents and artifacts of the presidency. They have come closer to understanding the awesome responsibility of that office and the man who held it. We have a school of public affairs that offers training for careers in public service. And we're going to try to produce thinkers and doers, people who dream of progress and will try to turn those dreams into solid achievements. This library reflects the nation for the last 40 years, from the early 30s through the late 60s. They picture a sweeping history that began with the Depression and ended with the most prosperous era this country's ever known. They record a drive for change and for social reform that's unparalleled in its energy and its scope. And a world war that was unmatched in its destruction. They chronicle the end of colonialism and the beginning of the Cold War and the atomic age which still threatened mankind. They cover the time when liberty was challenged in Europe and Latin America and Asia. And they record America's response to those challenges. So it's all here. The story of our time with the Barkov. There is no record of a mistake or an unpleasantness or criticism that is not included in the files here. We have papers from 40, some very turbulent years of public service. And we put them all over here in one place. For friends and foes to judge, to approve or to disapprove. I do not know how this period will later be regarded in the years to come, but that's really not the point. This library will show the facts, not just the joy and the triumphs, but the sorrows and the failures too. So Mr. President, we have here more than 31 million documents, others we hope to come. These will be preserved for this nation for all who care to review and to evaluate. And they will reflect what man can and cannot do in one life. The Lyndon B. Johnson Presidential Library is more than a building, more than a vast collection of papers and memorabilia. It is also an expression of faith. Faith that this is a place where scholars will come, where Americans will bring their families to study and to reflect upon the traditions of their government. 
to reflect upon the ideals and goals of our free society and to find within its rich resources the continuing promise that man can. <laughs>